Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, indeed. Babyface Ray. Yo, what up, though? Good Welcome. morning, my brother. How are you, sir? Wonderful. First time up here. Yeah. And you really are a nice guy. Look, he bought me some flowers for my last week of work. Yeah. So. You know, you, you know you're here upon special requests. I am? Yes, Angela Yee wanted you up here for her last week. Last week, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I did. I spoke to Leah Bia. Yeah. And, you know, of course, I got to have... Babyface Ray, because you've never been up here before. No, nope, no. Nope. And you've been grinding for a long time. And I saw just recently made the double XL freshman list, this last one. Yes. But you deserve it all. So yeah. How did like, that feel? He gave my flowers. I give him his flowers. It feel good. You know what I'm saying? You know how it be when you coming up, you doing your thing. You always want to make the double XL list. So it feel good to make the list finally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know, before, you, and you still got the baby face. So. Yeah. Do I? <laughs> Kind of. I think the hair changes it when you had... Um... They've been calling me old face Ray lately. <laughs> no, <they're not. laughs> but you got to think about that with names like that. You know what I mean? Whenever you put little on your name or young or but baby. Like baby face. Baby face. I've been trying to change it. This what, Ray? Face. That's why I came out with the mm-hmm. face album. But know? then it's Scarface. You know what I mean? That's what we call face. Face, mob, face yeah. mob. You know? You know, know, that's where I got it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to be the new... I think it's too late. You're the new face. face. Yeah. Word. You feel with the, with the double XL cover, you feel like it was, you should have had it a year ago? 100%. Yeah. For sure. I think everybody feel like that, though. Mm-hmm. But I don't know how the process is when they doing what they doing, but I still appreciate it. I'm grateful for that, though, for sure. Mm-hmm. What do you think changed? You think that they were just sleeping on you, or do you think that you did more this year? What do you think it is? Or oh, the city more popping now? I think the city more popping. I think the light on Detroit, so it's like, they just came through and figured it out. Nah, I guess. I don't know. It's interesting, though, because we've been saying for the past couple of years, at least I've been saying that the best rappers are coming from Memphis and Detroit. Absolutely. Yeah. And your name always comes up. So it's just like, it's not like people didn't know. No, 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 no. They knew. They knew. I don't know what it was. I guess mm, people, mm-hmm. other people was in line first or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How many people have been trying to sign you? Because even with the new album, Mob, uh, we see that you have. A lot of collabs on Face also, yeah, right? And so I'm sure that there's a lot of artists out there that have labels and a lot of people like Babyface Ray, he's the one. And so what was that process like for you? Because I, I can just imagine what your um, phone is like with people trying to say, we got to get him. So. It really, I really don't get the traffic. Like, it go through my manager. I'm pretty sure it'd be a lot of people that I cross paths with that be from different labels. They'd be like, we'd love to have you. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But I don't never engage into conversation when I just keep... Keep it pushing. You know it's not something you want to do? I mean, eventually, when it's that time, I think I ain't, ain't that time yet, though. Mm-hmm. How does the artist know when it's that time nowadays? I got this thing. I feel like, man, you you, you don't really need to, you don't really don't need to go to no major label until you get a hit. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? To you, a necessity, a priority. I, I feel like you get in there right now, and they ain't, they ain't going to really be thinking about you. They want you because you, you know you're coming up, but... If you ain't really land like that, like how you supposed to be land, don't go yet, I feel like. Oh, that's interesting, because it's kind of like nowadays you can just put your toe in the water, because you can put a song out. Yeah. And if, <laughs> if it go, then you'll know whether you need some more backing behind it or not. No, for sure. They'll take you now. The label will take you, I feel like, but me personally, I feel like it ain't time yet. Right. Let's talk, I want to talk about uh, you know music, the music scene in Detroit, right? Mm-hmm. There's so many different crews and cliques, and, and Detroit music is doing so well. How does all of the artists get along? Do y'all all get along, or is it still... Separate ways. Yeah, everybody cool. It ain't no friction or name. Most of the people that's got the motion right now, like, you know, Baby Money, Ice Wear, Vezo, uh, Peasy, just, you know, everybody, we all really kind of, like, came up together for mm-hmm. real. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a natural thing. He doing his thing. I'm doing my thing. It ain't no, it's really all love for real. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And plus, you all run into each other a lot, too. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Y'all be outside, man. <laughs> I, I dropped off a... Uh, some product to you guys. I went yeah. to everybody. I, came, I pulled right up to you, your studio in your hood. Envy pulled up on me in a Lamborghini, man, with a being Sprinter truck behind him. That was flat out. A presentation. I had to make sure I had, sec- had some security behind me just in case. You know. No, you Gucci. You that's what some... everybody said, but hey, that's you could have rolled your head out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Gucci. <laughs> you would recommend that anywhere in Detroit, Envy, or just in your in your area? No, in Detroit, period. You know, it, it's. I think the perception on Detroit kind of messed up. Like, mm-hmm. Detroit not what people make it out to be. It's, it's cool for real, you know what I'm saying? They don't be on that on nothing for real if you ain't did nothing, you know? 
Cool. You feel the changes Hell though. Hell no, you know, bro. People out here starving, bro. You feel the changes in the, you we feel the changes in the city hoods. though, because yeah, you've seen did. it has changed a lot in the past few years. Yeah. You know what are some of the positive things that you would say now as far as like the evolution? Um, Detroit, well, they building a lot. You know what I'm saying? Um, pretty much that. Like they investing a lot in Detroit. Something big about to happen out there. And then you know you got the music scene that's rising and doing what it's doing. Mm-hmm. The sports team's getting a little better, even though we still weak. But but at least the Pistons are downtown. Yeah, Pistons downtown. We got a young, good team. You know what I'm saying? Lions, they go. And you be at the games. But I'm loving to see the block, the black <laughs> entrepreneurs. Like, you know, you see them owning dispensaries now out there. Yeah, you see them owning a lot of, of restaurants out there. And yeah. I, that's what I love to see in Detroit. I'm seeing a, a lot more black people owning their own businesses in Detroit. I'm seeing that a lot, and, I, and I'm loving that. Yeah, that, I think Detroit... Uh, Cats been on that like for a while. They've you been know, hustling. you be out there doing your one two thing. Yeah, you know I mean, saying? I love Detroit. Are you making good investments? I know you got your song spend it. Are you spending your money on the? the no, I'm the not. Right make, I'm not making. I ain't even in the real estate or none of that yet. Like mm-hmm. I ain't even tapped into none of that. I've been so locked in and focused on the music. I ain't even ventured off and started investing and doing none of that. So you just spending all your money on women? Yeah. Yeah. You know. That's my investment. You saw here tricking? <laughs> yeah, I'm tricking. No, I'm playing. <laughs> the ladies know. love a song like that though. No, for sure. And a video where you know it's it's a nice feel. Ladies love gifts and they love money. They love being treated, you know what I'm saying? I always say it ain't tricking if she worth it. No, for if sure. The, if the woman is worth it, it ain't tricky. And you said you like women who are also doing things with their life, too. Not yeah. just sitting back waiting for you to bring everything home. I got this line, man. I know a swine from a duck. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you know who to spend the money on and who not to spend the money on. You're going to know off the rip. So how many Christmas gifts you got to buy this year, baby face Ray? One. I ain't got, I ain't got, I ain't, you know what I'm saying? One gift for my lady. <laughs> yeah. I ain't on that. <laughs> Yeah, see, there you go. That's, okay. Don't get me in trouble. That's why no. baby face, right? Because, <laughs> look, I did try to get him to do lip service. He was like, oh, I don't know if I could do that one. <laughs> no, I can come up there. I'm going to come up there and mess with you. Because, <laughs> you know, he's You be been... talking crazy up there, though. <laughs> Who? Who? Yeah. You. You're too big to be out. You be talking crazy. Yeah, you be talking crazy on lip service. Not me. That, you know, we take it where you take it. I'm going to come check you out, though. Yeah, yeah, right. you then when she asks you if you eat ass, you're going to be regretting it. I ain't, I'm, I'm going to be cool because I don't do that. You know what I'm saying? What? Come on now. <laughs> I don't do that. I'm be I'm be Gucci. That's how you hey. And y'all got a Gucci store in Detroit now. Well, I love it. That's amazing. That's I would so they, I, right downtown. So they built it and I walk right in there like, man, what y'all got going on in here? It's cool though. They got some good shit in there? Yeah. Now you dropped your last album uh, Face in, in January. You did you feel pressure to follow up in the same year? Uh yeah, yeah, because it did so well. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. I feel like the same formula, same remedy, you know. Do you feel like you gotta like stay in these people's faces nowadays, man? Hundred percent. Damn. You got the internet, social media, like it's new stuff happening every day, so you gotta stay relevant, stay creative, stay, you know what I'm saying, competitive, all of that. I just wonder about that with younger artists, cause it's like, man, it feel like you can water yourself down real quick. Or it could feel like people could forget it, forget it, about you real quick. It depends on how you do it too, though. Mm-hmm. Like some people do water themselves down and put too much content and music out, but if you plan and prep it the right way, I feel like you know what I'm saying it's gonna make sense. Mm-hmm. And the quality of it too. Yeah. Like you can't just put anything out. And even with Face, you added songs to it too. Like you did a deluxe version, right? Like kind of right away. And it's crazy when I did a deluxe. It's like. The deluxe got a better response than the the regular tape. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I did the deluxe all in like one night. You know what I'm saying? So that's crazy. Mm-hmm. We always talk about when we go to different markets, the OGs in that market, and, and do they mentor the younger rappers or or do they even fuck with the younger rappers? Have any of the OGs of Detroit mentored or fuck with you or or put you on the game at all? Uh yeah, my mentors are OGs. You know what I'm saying? The people well, not I, rappers per se. No, no, no rappers. Oh yeah, well kind of yeah. You know what I'm saying? But. No, nah, no. Nah. The OGs I know that I came up under, yeah, they mentored and kind of like that. They the reason why I'm structured and move how I move now. Nah, you know what I'm saying? Cause I came up and what they taught me. You know what I'm saying? So who I know you and um, PZ are really tight. Who did you come up with? Like grew up with, went to school with, and started rapping with early on. Yeah, I'm familiar with GT. Mm-hmm. GT. Uh, me and GT actually went to middle school together. You know what I'm saying? So we've been. We've been in a marching band, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> together, all of that. Uh, Vez from my neighborhood, mm-hmm. Peasy from the neighborhood, too, and Peasy up the street. You know what I'm saying? 
me and GT been cool. Me and Peasy became friends, you know what I'm saying? And Ice was already from our neighborhood. He used to get on our school bus and all of that. I kind of made the connection from Peasy to Ice with Vezo, and we all collectively became a group together, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like some real brother, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's we all came up together for sure. That was T and Eastside? Yeah. All right, so now everybody's, is the band getting back together? That'd be dope because you're all successful in your own right. Um, everybody locked in to focus on what they're doing right mm -hmm. now. I feel like everybody's trying to get what they can get, you know? It's been so long since we even had an opportunity to do any of this. So everybody in, in mode, in their own mode right now. But it's going to happen sooner, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What made you want to uh, be part of the marching band? Like, did you already have, I'm sure you already had a love for music, <laughs> but. Well, my granddad, rest in peace, he just passed away. He used to always listen to Miles Davis, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when I got to middle school and the marching band was available and I seen the trumpet, I'm like, let me try it out. I'm not even knowing it's marching. You know, it's different type of bands. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I played the trumpet and it just, you know what I'm saying? That was for my granddad type stuff. All right, do you still play or you? No, nah, no, nah, it was over with. <laughs> once, I got, <laughs> once I got to high school, they was they was on a college time and where they was making you wear white t-shirts and be crabs and, you know, hazing you and make you do, t I'm like, man, come on, I'm too but Most fly people for that. Taking that thing, taking that instrument on the bus. That's what most people are like, I'm not taking that trumpet on the nah, bus. No, heck you know. It, it, it was cool in middle school. It kind of got corny in high school. Mm -hmm. They ain't trying to see that for real. Now, if you didn't rap, what you think you would have been doing? Oh no, ain't no telling, man. That's why I, I you know, what I'm saying I probably be in the streets trying to, you know, mm -hmm. get rich for real. Mm -hmm. No cap. That's why I look at this as a blessing. You know what I'm saying? I don't take it for granted. I try to stay out the way of these cats. You know what I'm saying? Keep my face clean because I know how, how I get. You know what I'm saying? If somebody said that uh, Babyface gonna last forever because he doesn't promote violence or drugs. He just get fly and get money. You saw that tweet? Yeah, mm -hmm. I seen that. <laughs> what you thought about it? Um, yeah, I agree. I don't promote violence and drugs. You know what I'm saying? I do talk about it sometimes mm -hmm. because it's just, you know. The lifestyle. Yeah, what's going on around me, mm -hmm. you know? But I agree with them for sure. Is that a so, conscious effort not to do that? Huh? Is that a conscious effort not to do that? It just is what it is with me, you know what I'm saying? I mm -hmm. ain't known that type of time, you know? Mm -hmm. Did you have any hesitation when they offered you a spot on the freshman list for XXL? For sure, for sure. I ain't even want to do it for real. And then I'm like, well, might as well do it, you know what I'm saying? This, I ain't going to front, act like I don't want to be on the XXL. I've been fronting on myself, so mm -hmm. I did it because that's something I wanted to do for real. Why'd you feel like that? Because they fronted on you? A year prior? I feel like they front on me, but it probably they ain't front on me. They probably just wasn't thinking about me at the time. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we be thinking in our head that overthinking the situation. That's right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, man, y'all overlooking me. They don't even be that. So, <laughs> What do you think was like a turning point for you? For Because I feel like before the pandemic, you know, everybody locally knew who you were and I feel in the music business. But then all of a sudden, everybody's like, Babyface Ray, one of my favorite artists. What do you think was the turning point when that happened? I dropped an EP, man, called uh, For You. It's, you know what I'm saying? And my whole plan when I did the EP was I knew that we couldn't go outside. Everybody was listening to music. And I called my cameraman and told him the whole play. I said, I'm not shooting no videos. I'm not putting nothing nowhere else but on iTunes so they can go straight to it. And that's the EP that had Paperwork Party, number one fan. Mm -hmm. After I dropped that, my phone kind of started blowing up. Different labels started calling. That's how I even got introduced to Bearing Line for real. Mm -hmm. and she was working at Interscope. And they was trying to give me a deal. And we, I'm like, just be my manager. You know what I'm saying? And she kind of came through and helped structure me. So I'll say the EP was what turned it around for me. That's great. Because you hear like... You know, for a lot of people, especially during the pandemic, they were really feeling like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah, I was like that for real. I ain't going to know. I was lost in the sauce. You know, we we come from rap hustling, meaning verses and shows. That's sure. how we making our money for real. Mm -hmm. So when the pandemic hit, it was kind of like, damn, what are we going to do? Detroit was getting to the money, though. No, nah, for sure. Because <laughs> we ain't know what to expect. Once we figured out all that, you know, what was going on with the pandemic and how they... I ain't do none of that stuff, but all the money came to me because a lot of people was buying features and, you know mm. what I'm saying? So I appreciate the pandemic. That money was flowing during Man, that time. Man, it was You talking beautiful. about through scamming? Yeah. <laughs> oh, PPP. Yeah, 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 yeah. I heard they had cops like outside the jewelry stores because everybody was buying so much jewelry. Man, it was a line outside the jewelry store. Like, people just buying stuff just to buy it. Crazy. That's crazy. And a lot of that value ended up going back down. Yeah. Yeah, got it messed up. What's the importance of, 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 of having a manager? I don't think people talk about that enough. Because I even think about, like, 
for somebody like you who was getting hot and then you start getting booked for shows, like how do you know when to go up on your show prices, stuff like that? So what's the importance of a manager? Man, it, I feel like it's key because it's, it's only so much you can do as an artist. You know what I'm saying? You need to stay locked in and handle your business. Having a manager is very key. It depends on who it is, though. You know, mm -hmm. some managers be in it just because they want to be in it. Now, you got to find a manager that's really in sync with you and that's going to help you push your, you know what I'm saying, your movement and what you, your agenda is. Some cats be trying to manage just to manage because they see you getting a little friction, just be want to be around. But mm -hmm. it's important for sure. Paraline will fly out <laughs> to wherever you at and make those. And it's also like connecting with artists. Yeah. You know, that sure. maybe you wouldn't have had that interaction with otherwise. I was just telling somebody, uh, they was talking about signing new artists and all of that. I'm like, man, y'all got to, people got to start like getting with the artists and chilling with them and learning their character before mm -hmm. they start moving forward with the business and whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You never know what they might be on. It might be something you don't like. Mm -hmm. I feel like social media got to the point, oh, he's he's fire, I'm going to sign him, and then you sign him and you get with him. You don't even like this person. So mm -hmm. It's important to get with people and learn them. You know what I'm saying? Well, they're probably not even looking at you as a person. They're probably just looking at you as a product. No, for sure. They throw you out there real quick, make some money, yeah. move on to the next thing. That's the that's what they're doing. I'm already knowing that for sure. <laughs> so is that important to you too? Like before you sign to a major label, would you want to get to know the execs and everybody else over that's there? That's why I'm locked in with Empire so much. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like because of the relationship, how they deal with me, and how we deal with each other. Like guys, you're always answering the phone. Nima always answering the phone. Even if I ain't talking about music, I just want to kick it with them about something. They with it. And they touching right down, ten toes. They wherever you want, to, want them to come, they pull them right up. They not tripping. You know what I'm saying? And you would think that by guys he being the head of the label, he wouldn't be like that. Like, dude, I ain't really tripping. Like, he wherever you need him to be, mm -hmm. and he on what you want. As long as you handling your business, though. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And guys, he loves Detroit artists. Man, Detroit letters. Detroit artists love guys. <laughs> you gotta think about how many bags he done came and dropped on guys through there. People ain't even think we weren't gonna get money off rap. So for guys to come through and get distribution deals out like how he was, he was a blessing. For real. And you never thought you would make money off rap? Coming from Detroit? We, you know, I, we were selling CDs at first. So mm -hmm. when the streaming era came out, we I didn't well, I didn't know how to even make the money off streaming. I was lost. Like I didn't know how to upload it. Or nothing. So once I figured it out, it was like, man, you know. And the little checks that was coming monthly, we I thought I had hit the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is it right here. I'm making. I'm doing my CDs and I'm making my monthly checks. I'm cool. You know what I'm Did you ever feel like you had to leave the city? Cause you know how some people feel like, okay, I gotta move around. Maybe I gotta move to Atlanta. I gotta move to LA. No, no, no. Everybody be trying to get me to move away from the city. I'm trying to turn the city up, man. I ain't gonna lie. I'm trying to buy. Big uh, state of the art studio, bring the Motown valve back, you know what I'm saying? Try to help create some new opportunities for the artists that's coming up under me. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? How did you know you were starting to get a buzz outside of Detroit? Like, when did you first realize that? People from all over the world calling and, you know, big names tapping in, just saying they like my music or whatnot. So it's like, dang, it's going down. Mm hmm. Well, I think you're right about that, though. Now is the time to stay there, because I see they have they have been building new studios. Yeah. They're building labels. everything in Detroit. Yeah. Right? No, for sure. <laughs> Detroit's, Detroit's a beautiful place. I love Detroit. A lot of, a lot of action there. A lot of money there, a lot of artists, and, and a lot of community there. That's the, the, the main thing about Detroit. No, for sure. So, so when you make your records now, now, you know, independent round, do you, you think about the records you make? Like, do you try to make a radio record, or you just keep it to... No, I try to stay away from that. Just trying to make a certain individual record if it's a radio song then it's somebody like telling me like man this something good for the radio like an idea and we going with but i don't be in the studio like it's time to make a club banger and <laughs> i'm really just going off the natural feeling of what's going on how i feel for real. yeah what was happening when you wrote spend it <laughs> man i was in the studio with my man Pooh b shout out to Pooh, and he had already had the beat and the hook on there already and he was just playing it playing it playing it he like man i think you should put a verse on there and I'm like, man, this really ain't my swag. He like, man, trust me. And I put a verse on there. And we here now, it's going crazy, I ain't gonna lie. What makes it not your swag? Because you say I mean, you like tricking on the, on the ladies, <laughs> or lady. I wouldn't say it's not my swag, just, you know, just how the, the song is, it's radio type style. Mm -hmm. It's it's different from what I'm putting out. It ain't about the ladies, like, you know, I love the ladies for sure. And I definitely agree that you need to spin it if you dealing with them, you know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying the style of the song, and, you know what I'm saying? I wish artists understood that radio is so lost right now. Radio don't even know what 
a radio record is. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like if you play music and get it popping, eventually radio gonna come. I think the radio thing, ain't we done kind of lost it a little bit because of the streaming and social mm -hmm. media. You know what I'm saying? I don't even think people listen to the radio unless they going to work or whatnot or something like that. But that's No, that's a fact. I think, mm -hmm. I, I forgot what the actual number is, but it's like majority of people who listen to radio listen when they're commuting in their cars. Work, yeah. I be taking my daughter to school and that's when I hear the radio. You know what I'm saying? I was going to ask, you know, when I pulled up on you in Detroit, you had a bunch of uh, artists there as well, newer artists as well. So who are some of the new artists that we should be looking out with that you're working with? Um, when you pulled up, I was actually at my homeboy spot, uh, Lo Sinetti, mm -hmm. who, you know, they're, they're my guys, you know what I'm saying? I helped jumpstart their career, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I actually paid for their first video. And you see who you pulled up to. They got a whole brand building, clothing yeah, store building. with yeah, a studio yeah. and everything. And that's just off me putting the blueprint down for them. But, you know, Los and Eddie, uh, you got to... And what gave you the knowledge to do that? Because a lot of people, you know, it's hard for them to help other people until they feel like they made it, made it. But you you, you seen something in them that was like, I'm going to help these brothers out. It's just what people did for me. When I ain't had nothing going on, the places my OGs took me and what they showed me and what, I, what they allowed me to do when I wasn't having no emotion was like everything. Because it taught me a lot. It taught me about the things that I wanted to get, wanted to do, and it also taught me what not to do, you know what I'm saying? So, but I always remember them reaching back and helping me up, so it's a natural thing for me. If I see somebody trying and trying to do something, I'm gonna instantly, like, without no payment or none of that, like, mm -hmm. I ain't even trying to get nothing out of it, just like, oh, you on that? Come on, let's get it, you know what I'm saying? Ain't no big deal. That's how you get your blessings? Yeah, I, I, is it? <laughs> I believe that, mm -hmm. you know? But what about the song Nice Guy? Let's talk about that for a second then. Because kind of the opposite of this conversation, because sometimes people do take advantage when you're being a nice guy. 90% of the time, that's what it is. It's somebody trying to take advantage of the opportunity. Regardless, it don't matter how kind-hearted you is or not, they still going to be a vulture and try to, you know what I'm saying? So that's what the nice guy song was about, for real. Like, just if you know me, you know my character, you know my heart, like, you know what I'm on. You know, I'm just a nice guy, period. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So... The song was me just saying uh, it ain't no more that sometimes people will treat you crazy, you know what I'm saying, when they see you on on that type of time, you know what I'm saying? People like that just playing themselves, though. Yeah, you know I what agree. Because all they're doing is burning a bridge, ruining a relationship, you know? I agree, I agree. So they're really not playing you. And I think that's something for us to have to learn, too, like to set, like we always talk about setting boundaries. Because once you do something for somebody, certain people will appreciate it. Some people will continue to always keep asking you for things. And no, then for sure. See, eventually you might got to say no. And then all of a sudden you're the worst person. Literally. Literally what you're saying, for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, no, one, no more Mr. Nice Guy here. No, no, I ain't going to change. <laughs> I ain't going to change my ways. I ain't going to do that. Like, I still got to be me regardless. Mm -hmm. I ain't about to switch because y'all other people crazy. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I just got to be more careful or who I'm giving my energy, you know what I'm saying, time to. But you yeah, you got to set boundaries, but you are who you are. No, for sure. You know what I mean? So if you if you that type of person, you're going to be that type of person regardless of how many people burn you. No, for sure. And besides music, what other aspirations do you have? I always liked the basketball until I, once again, got in high school and figured out I was too little to even pursue that, so I scratched that off. But um, Were you really good, though? Yeah, I was all right. I ain't gonna lie. I, <laughs> if you saw me on the crew league or anything of that nature, I just been out of shape. So don't blame me for that. But there's somebody, the there's somebody watching yeah. this right now saying I used to bust his ass. <laughs> no, no, you, 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 you didn't do too good on, on the crew league. We won the first game. We lost to Walker. Though. They had me checking Walker flocking. Y'all know how big he is. Walker like six four, six. Five. You know what I'm saying? They set so, you up. It, yeah, it was bad. But <laughs> I um I like fashion. I'm kind of into fashion, and I ain't gonna lie, music. It ain't no plan B for me. Like, mm -hmm. I, music is what it's going to be for me, I feel. Because I remember how what music used to do for me at a young age, change mm -hmm. my mood, my attitude, and mm -hmm. all of that. So regardless if I'm rapping or doing whatever I'm doing, I'm going to be doing music some, some way, somehow, whether I'm finding an artist or something to help. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, music going to be a part of my you know situation for a minute. What about acting? Acting? Mm, I always wanted to act, for sure. I, I, lo I love movies, so... I don't think I can do it though. Well, I think it's so. terrible. Listen, you gotta be Take in one of classes. those like if they do a McGraw app three or something. Yeah, I already told them too. I told <laughs> uh, Cino like, man, y'all do McGraw, just call me. That's lit. Yeah, cause they'll love to see you in something like that. 
my mama want me to act, man. She always be telling me, like, well, you're going to be a big movie star. Even right now, like, what's going on? She's like, you know, you're going to be in a movie one day. I'm like, all right, mom. So why you ain't not listening to your mama? No, I'm listening to her for oh. sure. It's just like, when Take I be doing class, my little acting scenes, when my whistle name be so, I be like, man, I ain't shit. I mean, I can't cuss, but. Now you can cuss, yeah. Oh, yeah. I be doing my little acting. I be like, I ain't shit for real, so. <laughs> Who you comparing it to, though? <laughs> well, yeah. Man, I watch everything. All, every, all the movies. Denzel. Don't tell me. I knew you was going to say you know it. You can't compare yourself you to watch Denzel. Denzel. I'm watching Denzel. Like, hold on. I, ain't... <laughs> hey, even, I knew you was going to say Steven Denzel. Acting there now, Dan. <laughs> Look, Evie's acting now. Yeah. You is? What movie you in? I was in... Um... <laughs> It's a gay porn. It's on. Um, it's on. It's on Pornhub. You don't believe, you don't believe him. Nah. There's a show on uh, CBS. It's called East New York, and I was on that. This. this He's week. a snitch. Whoa. I'm not a snitch. Ooh, it's just acting, baby. Could you baby. play that Space role? You think? What? A snitch. No. It's, it's an acting. acting role. No. You no. could be the next Denzel. No. No. I ain't, no. No. So no. what? What characters won't you play there? <laughs> that. Don't you know, answer that. What yeah, about a you, cat? Know, you know what I won't play. I ain't even gonna don't say answer that. Don't, that. Don't, don't, don't even answer that. Snitch? Don't let him put what you. What about a police officer? He putting you. He don't do that. I, I ain't gonna he lie. putting you in a trick I, bag. I'm, I'm not even gonna say I won't play a snitch. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm open. Yeah, I'm open to whatever. It just hurt him so bad to say that just now. No, I'm open. He was like, I'm thinking about some of my favorite movies and the characters in them, so I'm open. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like all the mob movies. Yeah, I look. For yeah, sure. exactly. That's my movie's my thing. For sure. All right, there you go. Well, the album is. What you have bought? You had bought him some weed. Yeah, yeah. I pulled up. Uh, yeah, he did. Uh, gave you a headache. I don't really that. smoke like that. For real. Oh. What about the edibles? He gave you some edibles. I didn't give him no edibles. I just bought every the whole crew. Weed. I ain't gonna lie. Whatever you brought me, envy it was like all the little homies right there. We passed it out and they blew it. Like. Yeah, we gonna we gonna come back there at Christmas time. We gonna. Come back to everybody hood and, and drop off some more stuff, some more packages. Y'all show me so much love, so I just want to show it back. Nah, for Shout sure. out to Slurred. And then we're going to bring some some toys. I think we're going to do the toys, too, for the kids. We still in that demo. The demo you put down came through Lamborghini with the Sprint. Yeah, I think and people we, need to see that. You we know still I mean? in that. You know what I'm saying? And we pulled up in every hood. That was hard. Hood, but I, I thought that was dope. You know, the, if I make money in the hood, in the city, I like to spend money in the city. You know what I mean? Get sure. us to give back. For sure. Do you gamble? Like, do you be going to MGM or Motor City? And... I ain't going to lie. I've been going to MGM a lot lately. Just just going down there playing blackjack. How you been doing? It started off good, but now it's like, man. <laughs> it never ends good. Get up out of there, now you tripping. It never <laughs> ends good. Yeah, I started my first three times. I was just creeping out of there, winning like seven, 8,000, just leaving. Mm -hmm. What but about on sports? You bet on sports? Sometimes. I watch the game, man. Whoever losing, I bet the margin. Like, I bet they gonna come back. That's the easiest way to win. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know what I'm saying? So, What's the most you won in the casino? Eleven thousand. Nothing crazy. What's the most you lost? <laughs> Probably like fifteen thousand. Damn it, man. Okay. Sure. They owe you. Don't try to get it back. That's what I ain't going back though. <laughs> I, I ain't one of them gamblers that's gonna sit there and let you <laughs> eat that shit. I ain't doing that. It's over with. All right. Well, let's I get something some off the album. What you wanna hear? Oh, uh, we can go spin it. You know, it's holiday season. We're gonna spin it. Okay. Spin it, baby face. Baby Ray. face Ray. And it's yeah. the breakfast Club. appreciate you for joining us. Thank yes, you. thank you. It's my last week. Thank you for my present. For spending it. Thank you for having me. Appreciate y'all. All right, it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning, Babyface Ray.